Hey everybody, Charlie with NHORC here. Tonight I'm coming at you with a first unboxing look at the Element Enduro Trail Runner 4x4 RTR. So this is the one that I won at RC Excitement at their fall uh, expedition, which uh, probably just came out. So uh, it's that night after I won it. I'm not going to get to drive this tonight, but I really want to unbox it and take a look. So just got home. We're going to cut it open, take a look. I'm told there's a real neat surprise on the inside of this box uh, <clears throat> by one of the great folks at RC Excitement. Again, thank you to them for putting on the events. I'm super happy to get my hands on this uh, for free, basically. You know, So we're going to get opening and see what it's about. We got it out of the box here. We got to do the wonderful peeling of the various parts off. Take our pins out. Now, I didn't realize this. I think this is a 1.9 rig. All right, so this is apparently a class one rig. I didn't realize this was a class one rig. Uh, I'm gonna have to do some double checking, but these are way smaller than my TRX4 for sure. And uh, it looks like on the box they're 1.55 rims, which I think is class one. So I'm super excited about that. Let's get it up on the stand here to make it a little easier. Ooh, balancing, how does the balance work on this thing? I don't know. All right, get these body pins out. All right, let's see what we got underneath this guy. Oh wow, all right. So, this is real nice looking, C-channel. Now, I was quite interested in the Night Runner, uh, which I believe is a class two rig. Now this, this has gotta be a class one. Nice aluminum bodied shocks. So yeah, we've got all four link in the rear with a nice aluminum drive shaft, or might actually be steel, I'm not sure which. We've got a nice big transmission, and that looks like a 540 can motor, I think in there. I believe it's a 540 length. It looks a little short for a 550. It looks to be brushed, I think. And then receiver box, battery tray, nice little servo up front. A lot of space right up here in the front. That's interesting. And then the independent front suspension. This is what I'm real excited about. We've got the solid rear axle. We've got this little molded exhaust sticking way out the side. That looks that looks pretty silly, sticking way out. But uh, yeah, so this is this is real nice, nice and plush. Not a ton of flex. This has got to be a class one rig. Other things we got, we got a huge bag full of. All kinds of little plastic parts. Looks like. Oh, let's open it up. So, what do we got? We got lights. Oh, we've got lights right out of the box. That's cool. Let's figure out where they go. There's no buckets in this thing, so we'll have to see where that's at. We've got. All right. So there's a larger battery tray in there, as well as it looks like full extra set of ball ends and shock components and servo horns, another gear down here. <clears throat> another gear, so that must probably speed gearing. And then, what else we got? We got, oh my god, we've got a whole extra axle in here. That's nuts. This thing is an entire extra axle. Uh, yeah, we got some bumpers. Yeah, you know, so we gotta we gotta do some assembly here. So that's probably the front. And then we got what's that? A snorkel? Sorry. Yeah, we got a snorkel for it. And we got all kinds of long parts here. And then we got some extra body clips, O rings, that kind of thing. Next up, we've got the owner's manual along with some side mirrors and a ton of stickers here. That's pretty cool to see. Uh, huge sticker kit. That's kind of gaudy. <laughs> <clears throat> There's 
that's a jumper. I don't know what that's for. I mean, I know it's a jumper. Towing, maybe? No, no, so it, it's a, that's a plug. Oh, plug, oh yeah. It's a loop back plug. <clears throat> so, in the box, since this is an RTR, we've got this uh, XP130 from Associated Electrics. Um, this is a three channel system. All kinds of trim knobs up here. Looks very easy to uh, uh, to adjust. That's nice. Um, even got a nice little disc brake in there. Although the rotor turns with it. Boo. <laughs> the caliper, I mean the caliper turns with the wheel. But yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a nice little thing. Trigger feels a little mushy, but for an RTR, that's okay. I'm probably gonna keep this one on this transmitter so other folks can potentially run this. Although if it's a 1-1 one -one or a class one rig, maybe I will need to <laughs> put it on my Futaba. There, there is a surprising amount that you need to do for an RTR on this rig. So if you just want that super stock look, um, you really don't have to do anything. It's pretty much done, right? Um, but if you want the more aggressive off-roader look, there is actually quite a few things that need to be done to this. So this video is gonna act as a how-to if you're brand new to RCs and this is your first one. Welcome to the hobby. Um, I'm gonna show you how to put on all the stuff that comes with it in the manual. So we're gonna go over how to put the roof rack on, how to put the snorkel on, um, you know, obviously the RTR comes with the fenders and such on, but we're, uh, the, the over fenders, but we're going to put the bull bumpers on and all of that stuff. So we're going to do all that and I'll show you how to do it. Um, in addition, uh, I am going to paint this hood black, uh, to match my livery style. Now, traditionally, not traditionally, the way you're supposed to do it is you paint these bodies from the inside. So... The two options I have for painting this hood black to match my livery are to either strip the paint from the inside, which um, kind of a nightmare, especially if you're trying to only do a certain section. Uh, and this is already white. This like my my color is white with a black hood. So uh, there there's basically there's three options for doing it. You can strip the paint. You can put a wrap on it, which I've tried to wrap some stuff before. Not very good at it. Honestly, a lot of the thin Lexan is pretty difficult. Some people get a really good job at it, but I'm I'm not great at it, so I'm not gonna do that. Um, or the final option, which is the least preferable, is you can paint from the outside. So I'm probably gonna do that to this um, last. Uh, so I'll blast the top, you know, I'll mask everything off and paint the hood from the outside. It will experience scratches uh, when you do it that way. But um, I really don't want to take this thing apart and try to strip paint. So the other thing I'm going to do, um, this is a tip from RC Driver Online. Thank you for telling me this. Uh, is he said you should go around and put a little bit of uh, you know glue on the back of things like these fender flares. They got some wiggle to them. Um, even these like these little. Uh, windshield wipers have some wiggle. The only things that don't seem to have any real wiggle are the door handles and this rear and, and like these spoilers, the parts that are actually like on down here. So these fenders though are very, very wiggly. So we're gonna get doing this. So to do this obviously, um, you don't need the chassis. So just pop your body off, take your chassis, put it out of the way for the moment. Now this should be relatively straightforward, but I'll follow the manual for you newbies uh, who are here and walk you through step by step. So we're gonna wanna be on page 15 here. It starts at the bottom up to this step is done from the factory and we're gonna start down here. The first step we're gonna do is build the roof rack. So. Uh, if you've never seen one of these before, these are all the parts that are just molded together. This is how they come out of the factory. So generally you can kind of twist them off, but if you have a pair of clippers, that's usually the best bet to do the least amount of additional sanding. You don't actually have to do any sanding if you really don't want to. So you can use a pair of scissors for this, but if you're gonna get into RCs, I, I 
highly suggest you get yourself a pair of these snips. They're like zip tie snippers, um, plastic snippers. Super sharp, very handy for stuff like this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clip these out. So you don't wanna clip these, <laughs> right? This is supposed to be molded on. You're specifically clipping uh, the molding points. So what I'll do, right, you can see one right here. Um, right, it's you know generally a pretty small point of contact. So I'm just gonna make sure I'm as flat as possible because I want to not have to sand if I don't if I can avoid it. And you're just gonna click. Oh yeah, that's nice and smooth. The next one is gonna be right here. So I'm gonna come in from the other side because it'll get me a little flatter. Am I on camera? I'm on camera. Whoop and that pops right off. So that's all that's holding that one on. That's one side. We're gonna put that to the side. We're gonna do the other one. All right, so we've got all of those out. So what you may wanna do, it depends on how picky you are is some folks, if they're really concerned, will give these a little sand down if they're bumpy um, where you cut. In the case of these four, uh, they're all, whoopsie, sorry. In the case of these four, if you're real good with your snippers, you shouldn't have to sand them. If you're using regular scissors, you may need to though. So keep that in mind um, if you really wanna be as nice as possible. So this thing calls for these four pieces plus two pins. These are four, two, two, four, three on the book. So I'm gonna go ahead and find those. So they're probably gonna be in one of these other bags, which if I can avoid opening as many of these as I can, I'm going to. All right, so these two pins appear to be these guys right here, I think. They're 20 millimeter pins. So I would have expected these pins to be plastic, but they appear to be metal, which I mean, great. Like I'm not gonna complain about metal hardware. It's just kind of an odd choice. I suppose the tolerances are easier uh, to do when they're metal. So I'm gonna dump these into my little pit mat. Um, if you are gonna get into RCs and do any real work on them, I highly suggest getting one of these silicone pit mats. You can get them from Amazon for about $20. I'll put a link in the description. These things are really nice for keeping all your stuff together. Um, these little pins, I'm going to validate these are 20 millimeters. I've got a little ruler on my silicone pit mat. Yep. The first step is we're going to pop these in. I think that's as far as they go in. So now we're just going to mate them up to the other side. Obviously make sure everything's going the same direction. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this one down. And I'm going to make them this way. You've got to do them both at once, which is a pain in the butt. All right. Either I used the wrong pin, which I don't think is the case because it was in the bag with all the other body parts, or these things are too long. So the 20 mil, and what I did to test the depth, right, was I took a body pin and I shoved it down there and it only goes in that far. So that's as deep as it is. So I, if you mark it with your fingernail, then take this side and measure it to what needs to go in there. It's sticking out. It's, it's sticking out that much. So I need to trim these. Um, I don't have a great thing to trim these with with me right now. Oh, I'm gonna do the bad thing and I'm gonna clip them with my little clippers. Now you really shouldn't use these metal clippers on metal like this. This metal is very thin, so I think I can get away with it without completely destroying my clippers. Uh, these clippers aren't very much money though. You can get them on Amazon for cheap. So I'm just gonna snip the ends off. I did have a set I used for metal somewhere, but I don't know where they went. This is going to absolutely launch these things. All right, 
So here's what you do with these if you can't get these in. This is almost certainly going to be the most challenging part for my build here. This has already taken way too long. <laughs> I was dumb and cut them with one of these. This was a ton of force and it absolutely launched one of these things 30 feet away behind me somewhere. I don't know, it landed somewhere behind me. Uh, <clears throat> so if they don't fit, what you should do instead of cutting them like a dummy, like me, pull them out, get a very fine drill bit and just drill very slowly and gently in just just you know a little bit till they fit you could do the stupid way that i did it ruin a pair of clippers um or you could be a normal not dummy and simply drill drill them out um because on top of that if you do it wrong then the thing doesn't quite fit and you then have to go ahead and try to re-round out one side, which is stupid and annoying. Even clipped, these are hard. So you definitely don't need glue. Even with these clipped, I'm still using a lot of force here. If you're a kid doing this, maybe have your parents help with this particular step. There we go, because this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, they're together, finally. All right, our next step is we gotta put the cross crossbars across. So I did test fit these earlier and I probably have cut this bit. Uh, so these need a bit of glue. Um, probably the best glue to use would be like epoxy, but you can use super glue uh, for things that are not on Lexan. If you use super glue on Lexan, you will mess the Lexan up pretty bad. So don't do that. Um, with the super glue, this stuff will, at least what I'm using, which is Loctite super glue, it tends to frost black things a little bit if you're not very careful. So I'm going to put a very, whoa, small amount of this on. And once you do this, obviously, this becomes permanent. So if there's any doubt, if you want to do this, maybe wait. So I'm just going to put a little tiny dab on each side. Got to work fast because it's super glue. You just pop them on. And I think a little dab like that should probably be more than sufficient. Give it a little pressure. And that should be that. So I'm going to do that to the rest of them. Uh, I would suggest Although you could put them on upside down from the bottom, you can feed these in from the top, I would do that. So I've got this together and glued on. Um, I did screw up the glue in a few places uh, and managed to get it on some things, so it's probably gonna frost, but it is what it is. So we are on to the next step now, which is mounting this. So this is gonna require some drilling on the body which can be very nerve wracking if you're new, if this is your first rig. So drilling, you can do this step with a drill and the drill bit will need to be the exact same size as these posts, if the camera will focus. Where are we? So, you know, if you're gonna do this with a traditional power drill, go find some bits, figure out ones that match that exactly and use that. However, the tool folks in the RC business use is a hand drill. So this is a hand drill that will do from zero up to a 14 millimeter hole. These things are extremely sharp and dangerous, so you need to be very careful with these. This isn't really something I'd want a kid using. So this has markings on it right there. Uh, and basically it has a cutting blade here, here, here and here. So, you know, it's a very nasty little tool, which is super useful as an adult trying to build RC cars, but as a kid, you should not be doing one of these. A power drill would be far safer, but a power drill has far more likelihood to mess the body up. <clears throat> so, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this aside for the moment, and in this case, because they shipped this body with this, you actually don't need to do any measuring, which is great because that's usually the worst part of something like this. 
So I'm gonna zoom in here and hopefully you can see the body on the top. So there's a divot right here. So you can just kind of make that out in the light. And then another one here and another one here. So those are your measuring marks for the roof rack. So in my case, um, I am going to use my hand drill to cut these holes. I'm going to take my hand drill and I'm going to measure, ooh, I'm going to measure what size the hole is and it looks like it's a two millimeter, I believe. So I'm gonna start with a two millimeter hole and go from there. All right, so I'm gonna do my drilling here. Now, the key thing, whether you're using a drill, if you're using a drill, I would recommend a little pilot hole, like the smallest bit you can find first and then the bigger one. Um, but the thing is, what I like to do for these, just make sure I don't have super glue on my fingers. <coughs> and what I like to do is I like to brace on either side of the hole with my hand. So I'm doing this kind of thing. I'm gonna drill between my fingers there which if you're careful, if you're not careful, you can poke yourself, especially with one of these, and it's even worse with a power drill. But I'm gonna basically brace either side of that hole. You wanna use a bright light in the background to kind of find the center. You go straight up, and then you give it a little push until you get that pop like that. And if you're using one of these hand drills, you start drilling. Now this takes a while with one of these hand drills, um, also, you always want to drill from the outside in, that way you leave the gross, you know, gross bits um, on the inside and they're not visible. Uh, if you're using one of these hand drills, you kind of got to go back and forth. Sometimes you got to like take it out, restart it, and go again. Once you get going, you can do a little bit from the inside, but you want to be... I usually only kind of go from the inside to clean the hole up a little bit at the end. All right, now I'm right at that two mil mark on the top side, which generally means it's a little smaller on the inside. So this is where I do my slight cleanup. If you're using a power drill, you probably don't need to do this. Where I just give it a couple quick little twists. Brush everything off. And Sometimes you'll have some yucky bits on the inside uh, that may need some trimming. If you've got a set of these trimmers, these work very well for this. Be very careful not to scratch the paint because it is on the inside, so it's very easy to scratch from the inside. If you don't do this little step where you're cleaning these burrs off from the inside, sometimes depending on what the object is, it won't sit quite flush, um, but that should be fine. So I'm gonna test fit that hole before I move on, make sure it fits. All right, so it's still a little too snug, so I'm just gonna come back, open it up a little more, try it again, see if it fits. There we go, and it fits. Get that off. I'm gonna go around and do the other five, and we'll come back. All right, I've got all six of my holes drilled to the proper tolerances, so all we're gonna do at this point, take our roof rack, and hope everything lines up properly, which it should. Pop all of those down through. Now this is gonna make these two body posts a little harder to get your body off of. So you can't like, well you could load it with like a spare tire and everything, but um, that is gonna make it a fair bit more challenging to get your, your body posts on and off. So you put that on, Hold it on, flip the whole thing over so you're sitting on your roof rack. And then all you're gonna do, and some extra small body clips, all you do for these is you, and if you're doing this without filming, you know, just leave it on the bench. All right, we're gonna do this middle. So you're gonna take your little O-ring, pop it over the top. <clears throat> then grab your little body pin and generally, uh, there is some tension here. It's intentional to keep things from flopping. Uh, is you just run it through like that, and that's it. 
do that on all six of them. I'm gonna do that off camera because it's very hard to do while filming. It's just very awkward. All right, we've got that roof rack on now. It looks real slick. I think they should have just gone ahead and put the, at least that roof rack on from the factory and the mirrors. It's very odd to me that they put like all of these door handles and fender flares on, but they didn't put the roof rack or the, the mirrors on. Like the snorkel I can see is not everybody might want a snorkel or the bumpers, but the mirrors and the roof rack are pretty much factory accessories on a real Toyota Highlander. So as you can see in there, all those clips are in. And uh, we're gonna move on to the next bit, which is going to be the mirrors and the snorkel. So, mirrors come in this little bag. Pop that open. These mirrors are pretty much the same as the roof rack, uh, except they don't have individual pins. They've got these, these little guys, which I believe just click on. All right, I just went to drill these and much to my surprise, they are already drilled. The stickers are just over them. So, uh, all we're gonna do for these, match up the proper side, pop them through, flip it over, grab your little band little clippy thing. I'm not really sure what that's called. On these, there's a side that has a rounded edge and a beveled edge, or, and a flat edge. So you've got a rounded curve and a flat like 90 degree angle. So the 90 is gonna go towards the body. Oh boy. All right, they don't, they don't quite click in like I was expecting. I think this is probably what RC Driver was talking about as far as what you should put a dab of glue on, but I'm gonna go through and do the gluing after. So that's, that's it. It's on, Woo, where are we? There we go, mirror on, I'm gonna do the other one. All right, next up, we're on to, I'm gonna do the snorkel next. So I'm not actually sure if I'm gonna put this on. I also find it quite entertaining that this entire tree is just for the snorkel, I think. Um, unless maybe those are something I need. I don't think they are, but don't ever throw these things out until you're done uh, when you're doing something like this. Just put them to the side in case you realize there was some part on them later. So the snorkel has three three pins on it, but these are not drilled yet. So if you want to do this, you do need to drill them. And there are some little markers. So I'm gonna test fit this. So I, I had a snorkel on my TRX4 Sport, uh, the original body, not the white one, like the blue one, I had the snorkel kit on it. And I actually found that I had clearance problems on some of the crawler courses where there were like low bridges where the snorkel would hook on stuff and would be a big pain in the butt. Uh, so I'm not sure if I'm putting that on. So the first divot is right here. You won't be able to see it in the lens, in the camera, uh, but it's got the divots here, here, and there should be one right there. Uh, and let's see, how does this look when you line it up? Okay, so this snorkel is real low. Um, I don't, I don't know if I like this snorkel, honestly. Like the snorkel indicates that, like, yeah, sure, this is electric and you could drive it through water. I don't tend to do that. So the front of this snorkel just has no depth and I don't think there's a sticker for it. Oh, there is a sticker for it. Okay, so there there is a sticker for the snorkel, it looks like. Eh, I don't know. I don't actually think I want the snorkel on this rig. Um, I mean, with it laid in, it'll be a little sleeker, but I don't, I don't think I want the snorkel. So I'm gonna skip the snorkel. Um, if you are doing the snorkel, same thing, hole, 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 be very careful. And then the snorkel is held on similarly by, um, oh, it's right here. So if you're doing the snorkel, uh, th this piece is the two that go right here. And then this little guy over here uh, with the hole through it is the one piece that's gonna go up there. So if you're doing that, pop those three holes and then push those on a little dab of glue on the back, which you'll see me do in a bit. But, um, so given that that has parts on it, I'm not gonna put that in my trash pile. I'm gonna put that in my spare parts pile. But I don't, I don't think I want the snorkel. So, next up we're on to kind of the main attraction here, which is the, the front bumper. Now you definitely could run this in kind of a super stock form with just a roof rack, but um, in my experience, you want something big and beefy protecting the front end of this thing. Um, because it will 
take a beating. Like, there's no getting around that. It's gonna take a beating. Um, I would prefer a metal bumper, but uh, I don't really want to spend a lot of money on this because uh, it was free, <laughs> and I'm trying to build a house. So I'm going to put the body off to the side for this step. We're going to bring the car back over. This is just a cheap little stand off of Amazon. Very handy. Oh, ladybug. Very handy if you're working on lots of RCs, um, just because it lets you, you know, spin the thing around and work on it. So it's very nice. Uh, so how these work is pretty straightforward. We're gonna clip them all off. So this piece has the front bumper, which I just clipped off. Then you've got an optional set of wings for the front bumper, a fake uh, winch fair lead, and a couple of clevises here that go on the front bumper as well. So I'm gonna clip all of these off. I think I'm gonna go full width, but I wanna see what it looks like without it. So earlier when I was talking about uh, being wary of you know using good clippers so this piece is quite bumpy now and jagged because I screwed my clippers up on the metal stage so you can either sand it or you can just pull out like an exacto knife or a hobby knife or something and just do a little bit of gentle shaving depends on how big it is you can do both obviously but I did kind of jack my clippers up but the rest look okay it was just that that needed that so. All right, since I'm not sure if I want just the center or if I want the wings also, I'm gonna put the center together first. So that's gonna be the fair lead goes on and the clevises go on. For the fair lead, you're gonna use the two screws that have the cap heads. The cap head has this squared off button top versus uh, a rounded head here, which is more you know traditional Allen. So the two with the you know, kind of 90 degree top on it is going to be what holds the <clears throat> what holds the fair lead um, on, and then the rounded two shorter ones are going to be what hold the clevises on. So the button heads or the the cap heads are a two mil. So you're just going to pop this on here, and if this is your first time assembling any RC things, these plastic ones are not tapped for screws so you have to cut the threads as you go so uh it can be a little tough sometimes the first time you're getting something in this one actually went in very easily which is nice i'm not going to tighten that down all the way yet i want to get the other one lined up and started first and you got to remember you're putting a metal screw whoa you're putting a metal screw into a plastic piece uh, and it can be very easy to strip. So you want to take care to not strip these, um, strip the plastic, right? So like the, the head of the thing, whatever. But uh, what I use is when I get to where I'm feeling resistance is I do like this little, I call it like my two finger pinch, is I hold it with two fingers and I give it a little twist until I can't really move it anymore with like kind of a firm but not like super tight grip and that's where I stop because this piece isn't really going to be experiencing any real forces unless you put a real winch in there, which I might do. Um, but yeah, like that's, it's not too bad. So then next, the clevises go right here, and they do have molding lines on, uh, molding dots on the back of one side. So I'm going to put those in, uh, and then these just use okay. So three by eight millimeter. Um, one of the tricks with this book, if you're not sure and you don't have calipers, uh, this book has a very nice feature where it's got a 1-1 scale of all of the items. So you can go to the page you're on, or go to the page you're building somewhere once you find it, because I totally lost it. So, <laughs> the handy thing about these uh, team associated manuals is they have this page in the front that's one one scale So if you don't know what size the screw is just lay it against this and it'll tell you exactly what it is I can eyeball them at this point uh, Or if I can't I usually use digital calipers, but that's totally there if you need it So you're gonna take the I believe this is a three by eight mil it says in the manual Yep, three by eight mil and you're gonna put these into the clevises again uh, Make sure not to over tighten or strip um, generally you want these to move. In this case, it's actually threading the opposite side. 
here. Um, so you kind of got to give the opposite side a little bit of a hold while you do it. And because this is a piece that's supposed to kind of freely dangle, if you go too hard, it will just kind of sit in whatever position you leave it in. Um, I don't like that. I want them to kind of just flop. So uh, I, I bring back them out until they kind of roughly flop. Now this is plastic. It's not going to be perfect, but there we go. Perfect. See, I put it up and it falls back down. That's exactly what I want. I'll put the other one on. All right, so now comes some test fitment. So this goes in here, right? So there are some screws holding. They, they pre-mounted the screws that hold the bumper in, and I don't think they really do much else. Oh, they hold, they hold this front skid plate on. So we have to remove these two screws, and those are probably gonna be two millimeters. So we're just gonna back those out. Yep, two mils. Those two are all the way out. You'll note there are multiple different mounting holes here. So uh, we'll figure out what the right one is for just the body here in a second. It doesn't appear to be labeled at all. Um, the reason you may want them mounted further out is if you want to mount a winch or if you change the body, you need to adjust this front bumper. So we're gonna wiggle this in. We're gonna drop the body on. No need for your pins. I do have a hell of a time lining this body up for some reason. So you have to commit to which one of these you want. So I was trying to figure out how this goes. Usually bumpers like this on most rigs kind of sit in front. This one, if you want to do just this center piece, you actually have to trim this center piece out entirely and cut it away from the body. So you cannot go back. Um, and if you want to go full width, the same thing applies. So. The full width setup, right? Um, I think I'm gonna go full width here, but basically you clip these together. The, the, going full width also allows you to run little fog lights in the front bumper, uh, and it comes with them, which is nice. It gives you a little bit of lighting. Um, so if I want to remove the front bumper, uh, if, if you want to go with that full front bumper, you do actually have to trim it away. Um, so as you can see here in the manual, if you want to do just the center, just the center piece, you cut the center section away. And if you want to do the whole thing, you actually have to cut the entire front bumper away. So what do I want to do? Having run a lot of these, and like, what do you want to do right now? Aesthetically, you've got your preference. I think probably aesthetically what would look the coolest is just the center, because uh, that is kind of an unusual look for an RC, just the bull bar. However, knowing how these things get used, the most the, the most durable option is going to be to put this entire front bumper on, because especially if you're doing hard descents, um, these lower bodies get hit. And if you can transfer the impacts to your frame, right, because this is bolted to the frame and not the body, um, it, it massively helps the longevity of the rig. So I am gonna go full width here and cut the whole thing away. So before I do that, I'm gonna move this back out of the way. I'm going to finish assembling the front bumper in this case. So we need a three by 10 mils. Again, if you're not sure, go consult the front page of the manual or grab yourself a pair of digital calipers. And this should be very straightforward. All you do with these is they've got a little notch. You can see there, they clip in like that. And then you put the screws here, 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 and here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those screws in and then I'll come right back. So I've got the front bumper assembled at this point and uh, you could just go ahead and install it, but they gave you LEDs for the front the front fog lights, so I'm gonna put those in. So interestingly, these aren't shown in the manual how they're supposed to be installed, but based on the hardware they gave me, it's pretty straightforward if you've done one of these before. Uh, it could be perplexing if you've never seen one. So what you wanna do is stick those in like that, and then you're gonna take these real shorty screws and you're gonna just, so when you put these in, you want the wires to be flat like that. Sorry. You want the wires to be going 
the same direction as the bumper. And then you're gonna take this screw and the screw is simply gonna go in the little hole below it and just pin the uh, light in. So I will say, although this is a secure option, there's gonna be a lot of light bleed through with this particular configuration. Um, there are a few different things you can do to remedy that. Um, what I will probably do is I have a, um, I have black hot glue that I use for things like this. Um, and I'll probably just gum up the back of the light with the black hot glue so it doesn't shine through. And with this one, you don't need to go crazy tight. As you can see, that screw is just keeping that captive in there. But like I said, you're probably going to get some light bleed through. So you may just want to take something like black hot glue and gum up the rear. I'm going to put the other one in. All right, so installing the lights and the front bumper here. So what you want to do is you first need to identify where you're plugging the lights in. So in this case, this has two of these plugs coming off of your ESC right here. Uh, this is for your lights. So the lights are on the passenger side US of the vehicle. So what you wanna do is make sure that this is you know well tidied up and kind of cabled over. So with uh, these, you can bend these over. Don't go nuts with it, <laughs> but you absolutely can bend them over. Um, I'm actually going to loosen this one slightly so I can rotate them. You generally, if you've got two like this, like you wouldn't want to bend them this way. I'm going to rotate this slightly in its housing. Like that. I'm going to tighten it back down. And then I'm just going to simply gently bend this over that way. So uh, if you are particularly sensitive to cable management, I would suggest you get a little zip tie, which I am. <laughs> uh, as a PC guy, I'm into cable management, uh, is what it is. So <clears throat> I don't think we're gonna be going all the way in here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and zip tie this to the front right here, basically like this. So there we go. I'm just kind of zipped right around that post. I grabbed a little bit of the extra to make sure it doesn't show at the bottom. And I'm just pulling it snug. You don't have to go super tight. These are not load bearing in any capacity. Boy, I have trashed these clippers. Uh, and it's just like that. And then this is just going to simply slide right in. So I'm not going to put these two screws up through the bottom yet since I don't know exactly how far they're going to go. Actually, well, I know it can't go further than that. <laughs> so uh, there is actually a set I'm hitting something in the rear, stopping it from going any deeper in. And then as you can see with this here, uh, it will very nicely tuck right along here. I'll be able to zip tie it, which I'll get to once, we're, once I've got the screws in. So now comes the scary part. I believe for this, I need to cut all the way to here, which would make sense given how the body looks. That actually <laughs> looks like it might just pop. It won't, oh wait. Oh, it totally does. Okay, you don't have to cut. Oh, that's amazing. The manual must be out of date. Okay, so this got way less scary, way less scary. So this front bumper is actually held on by four pins. So one, two, three, four, knowing that, get rid of this thing. <laughs> these, there's no way these four pins are gonna hold up, I don't think, to the rigors of real crawling. I mean, if you're just somebody who maybe does, um, you know, trail walks or hikes, you're okay, but if you, you really send this thing, it, it's gonna come off. If you can't quite get them off, you can use something like your clippers, just be careful not to cut your body up and just kind of, or you know, a pair of needle nose pliers would work just fine. I'm just kind of pry this one off. I should be able to walk this away. It looks like there might be, okay, so there's some double-sided sticky tape as well. So you just kind of got to gently peel. Ooh, maybe not so gently. <laughs> 
There we go, like that. Uh, something else went flying. So there's your front bumper. I'm gonna put that aside. Front, okay, so I think that bumper is maybe in one spot too far. But as you can see, so although, I, d I don't think these are stuck on, but we definitely have to take this part of the fender flare off. You can see it sticks past, so we're gonna figure that out. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. I just put a nice big dent in the wrong spot. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these for ease of cutting. Luckily they pop right off. Yeah, these definitely need to be glued once you're done. I'll show you that in the last step. So remove your fender flare, you just take those four off like you did with the body. And then you can see the line that comes on it and we're just gonna cut right at that line all the way around. Now I th a clean pair of these would be pretty good or a Dremel. Maybe I can use my body, you know what, I'm going to try my body scissors. Um, if you get into building, you'll end up with Lexan specific scissors for cutting this stuff. Uh, I hope I don't screw these up because these aren't particularly cheap. I'm just kind of sawing away. You could use a regular pair of scissors, just whatever you're using, try to make sure it's sharp. I think I'm going to need to do a little sanding. Yeah, so I got it off there. I got it off, but it's a little messed up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab some sandpaper and kind of use like a medium, medium grit sandpaper. This is silly expensive sandpaper that I'm using that I bought at a hobby shop, which is plastic backed, which is neat, but highly unnecessary for the cost. And I'm just gonna smooth this out. You can skip this step if you don't care. These are probably gonna catch some, some damage too over time so but I don't want them to start life looking like that and I think I actually gotta do a little bit more trimming I'm gonna pop this other side off and do that one all right with that off I'm gonna go ahead and pop my fender flares back on so this is very straightforward just like the other thing and I think I'm gonna take this opportunity to glue once I get these on before I get to the next phase I think it's silly of them to not instruct people to glue. So I'm very glad, thank you RC Driver Online, for giving me the heads up to glue these on. I could definitely see why you told me to do that. Um, they are just, they're just gonna fall off. Like, you know, even at low speeds, I mean, packing, I've got the only bright light on in my garage and now all the bugs are finding it. Um, if you have a lot of bright lights on for the studio lighting to make this visible. Um, so what we're gonna wanna do here at this point is get your super glue back out. You have to be very careful with this. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go around the whole body and I'm gonna push every one of these little pins in as far as it'll go. Uh, and I need to put these back on. Remember to replace all the ones you removed if you're taking the bumper off. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around to every one and really give it a nice little push, especially the factory ones. Uh, and make sure everything is as in as it can go. And the fender flares definitely suffer from not being all the way in from the factory. But the rest of the stuff seems pretty good, particularly the non-fender flare parts. But the fender flares are terrible. So pop them all in. And what I'm gonna do here, and again, be very careful to not get super glue on your body. Now you could probably do this with hot glue um, if you wanted, although hot glue has its own issues with Lexan bodies, less, much less so, but it still can be a problem. Is I'm just going to put a little tap of super glue on each one of these posts to just hold the post. Now obviously if you're not sure if you want to keep something on the body, don't do this. But in just a tiny little dab of super glue right on the edge of each post should hold everything together nicely. 
And you can probably undo this with a pair of clippers if you had to. <clears throat> all right, I've gone around and done all of those. I, of course, got some super glue on the outside of the body, which totally sucks. And I don't think I can do anything about it. Luckily, it's like right there. Luckily, the body is white and the super glue will frost white. And it's on the outside, so it probably won't matter. And I mean, this thing will only be this clean for a short amount of time. So, that's the body complete. And we're basically done at this point. Um, we just got to make sure everything lines up. So I am going to be particularly careful if you want to be very careful. Maybe wait till your super glue dries entirely before fitting your body. But it's pushing midnight here because I got to do this between my you know, real job and having a family. So I want it done now. <laughs> so I would say that we are just about right for this front set. Oh yeah, that's perfect. So yeah, if you have a winch you wanna run, you could run this bumper further out to give you a little bit of space, but that's totally perfect where it is. Nice and close in, that lines up super nice. That looks really nice on it. So all we gotta do at this point now is just run these two screws back in. that we put, took out. So you do wanna just try to make sure you're roughly lined up. These were already threaded since they were in from the factory. It's screwed on now. Double check one more time. Then we'll finish up with our cable management. Or if you don't care, you could just be done. Yeah, look at that. That looks so slick. Yeah, I, I was I was worried about the decision to cut the body, and mm, it looks so good that the, the cutting the body is the right option. I gotta see if I can find some real light buckets for this thing. It looks so good, and then just has like fake lights on it, other than the bar. So the only other thing I'm gonna do here at this point is I'm gonna finish up my cable management with my handy dandy zip ties. I don't like cables moving. I'm not a fan of this. I actually might see if I can do something about that too. We've got a zip tie up here mounted to the bumper and then this just tracks back. So this is pretty easy to do. Uh, I'm just gonna go to the shock tower, I think. Let's see, let's plug it in. So we've got two spares for lights here, which is nice. These are keyed in one direction, so usually you can't plug them in wrong, but if you're not sure, all you gotta do is look at where the wires enter and line the colors up, right? So red is in the center, black is in the bottom, so this is just gonna go right like that. Push them together till you get a nice little click. You could swap to the big battery tray if you wanted. That's like this wide, that's gonna be pretty straightforward. You should just take the uh, Velcro out and pull, pop some screws and replace it with the one in there. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna unplug this and I'm gonna see if I can thread this under here under the battery tray like so and then can we pop back up right there oh yeah okay so that's gonna be I think my preferred as long as you're pulled tight where am I on frame as long as you're pulled tight so all I did was I went in right here near the steering servo and popped out under the battery as long as we are pulled in nice and tight uh, the the frame will protect that wire. We're gonna have to zip this one down as well. I'm just gonna zip it to that. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna pull this pretty tight and I'm going to zip it to the suspension upright. Now on some of these you don't go tight. On this one I'm gonna go very tight and as low as I can go. All right, so as you can see right there, I've just zip tied everything together, including the spare plug. I don't want the spare plug dangling down here, getting all gummed up with crap. I mean, it's already pretty exposed. This thing could definitely use some fender flares. So my next step here is gonna be customization for the body, which I'll get to, not tonight, but it'll be in this video. I'm gonna paint the hood black. 
and then I gotta get my decals on it. I love my stickers. This actually comes with some pretty solid decals. Now, I'm not one for the large designs down the side, but I really like the scale bumper stickers. Some of these I'm actually probably gonna use. I like this do not launch scientific experiment in progress sticker. Um, I, I actually, I really like some of these. Um, I like that it comes with these windshield banners. I am a fan of those. I'm gonna hopefully my NHORC ones will fit. But this is this is a solid sticker sheet, just straight up. Like you've even got like a mock um, like sale sticker you would see at a dealership that you could stick on the window. This is a cool sticker sheet. Like props to to Enduro to to Team Associated like for for putting together a solid sticker sheet. I love how this thing looks. It just looks so nice. I love that they, you know, they didn't black the windows out. It's just, this is a nice little rig. All right, everybody, uh, I'm working on customizing the trail runner today. So I am doing a thing you are not supposed to do, which is painting from the outside. So. This white body lines up perfectly with my livery, with the white bodies and the black hoods. And I really didn't want to try to, uh, you know, remove the paint from the inside. And honestly, with my other trucks, I don't usually take too many hard hood hits. Um, so I think I can just, I'll, I'm gonna paint from the outside and we'll see how long it lasts. I can always recoat it if I have to. Um, so <clears throat> I've taped the whole body off and used a bunch of leftover bubble wrap I had uh, to just do a real lazy job of it. I'm using some Traxxas paint today, so I'm gonna use this Traxxas black and then the Spastics uh, matte. So this hood is gonna be a matte finish, which is gonna be different from my other ones, but I think it's gonna look pretty good. So I'm gonna get this sprayed on. I'm pushing the limits of the paint here. I think I might actually be a little below them. It's probably about 50 out right now, but I'm hoping that being in the sun-ish will, uh, will make up for it. So I'm gonna spray this on. Check all my, my tape lines one more time. And the other thing I've done is uh, wash the hood down with Dawn and then wiped it off real good. So spray painting. Start off, spray over, six to eight inches away, light coats. And that front of the hood's a little darker than I'd prefer, or a little uh, thicker than I'd prefer for a first coat. but is what it is. I've got some spatter drops. Cans are a little cold. Again, I should probably be doing this inside, but until I get my new house built, not really gonna have a easy way to do it. I could have booted the barn up and left it, but all right, so that's that. I'm gonna let it sit for maybe five minutes. I've definitely got some little bubbles on there. Uh, splash dots on there, but hopefully they'll get covered as we go. So I'm gonna do that and I'll come back when I'm putting on the mat. All right, I've got two coats done. Got a couple of little splotches from not heating the cans up enough, but that's okay. So it's been 20 minutes or so, maybe 30. Since I put this on, I'm going to very gently check my tape here restick anything that's come unstuck. So next up is the Spastics uh, matte finish. I vastly prefer this over the Traxxas one. Uh, the Traxxas one, I'm not sure if I did it wrong or if I put it on too heavy or if it just is the way it is. But if you watch my video where I customize my SCX24, I'll put the link up in the corner. Uh, <clears throat> It really came out like whitish, which I don't want. I just want a matte black. So this stuff works a lot better than the Traxxas stuff. I don't usually use Traxxas paint. I usually use Tamiya, uh, which I prefer, but I got a great deal on the Traxxas. The boys are coming over to see what I'm doing. All right, put this on, same as the other stuff. Should only need one coat of this.
I'm just gonna do one kind of heavy coat. Not too heavy. I'm just hitting it from all sides to make sure I get all the angles of these little lines and scoops and stuff in the hood. That way it's gonna be real matte. The wind isn't super cooperative with me today, but that's okay. It's kind of a heavy coat. All right, I'm gonna pull the tape off. <clears throat> it's been, it sat for a couple, it sat for about an hour or two now, so we're gonna pull the tape off and see how I did with my my tape job. That's a car. It is a car, Ellie. I like that car. <laughs> yeah, me too. All right, sorry I'm not on the bench here with the lighting. I'm trying to cram this in where I can. So overall, these lines came out quite nicely, but I do have a couple little places of overspray. So we've got a little bit. Shh, Ellie. We've got a little bit right here in the corner. That side's good enough. And then right here. All right, sorry about that. Camera did a few little weird things there. I am on my GoPro instead of the Nikon because it happens to be out. But as you can see right here on each side, I got a little bit of overspray. If you're doing this before it's super dry, there's a couple ways you can you can take care of it. I usually just like to try to use my nail. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. Especially when you're on the outside here. Um, the high gloss finish usually helps it come away a little bit. Um, Honestly, it's not that bad. Maybe I'll leave it alone. Um, but if your nail doesn't work, you can use the back edge of an X-Acto knife, toothpick, something a little sharper and harder than your nail, and usually it'll come, come off. So I'm going to work on scrubbing these off. I'll let you know what I ended up using. But I think it's, you know, you could try a Q-tip with a bit of alcohol on it, but you run the risk of messing up the actual good paint when you're trying to get the overspray off, doing more damage than good. Overall though, <clears throat> it looks really nice. Uh, so we'll see how long it lasts. Given that this is a class one truck, I'm or class zero, I'm not gonna be doing a ton with it, but we'll see, it looks really nice so far. So you may notice a pretty noticeable bump in audio quality right now. I've switched to my new DJI Pocket 3. Uh, that I just got and it has an independent mic so I'll be mic'd up now which is great as you can see I've finished up putting the decals on uh, I couldn't quite get all of the the paint off but that's okay but I've got my pretty standard decals on it Toyota across the front had a little extra Toyota badge um, and you know kind of just general sponsors across it I've got my driver tag got my my logo plus a whole bunch of stickers from rc plate shop of national parks which is super cool on the back we've got uh you know my my normal hoonigan stuff plus some crawler cult rc decals which are super fun plus uh, a few of the decals that came with the kit and then my custom uh you know social media handles also from rc plate shop if you want to get any of them from RC Plate Shop, it's a uh, use code NHORC at checkout for 15% off. I do have a plate coming as well, but that's not here yet. And then on this side, <coughs> and then on this side, just a few more kind of fun decals from uh, my drifters. So, and then all the same stuff up the side. <laughs> 